So, as you can see, I'm getting ready for bed. And <laughs> this is the last of the video series of this Shabby Chic mini album tutorial that was, gosh, recorded pre-2020 mayhem. <laughs> And so, uh, let me know in the comment section below if you've enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more scrapbook tutorials, even though I, you know, I can't talk the way I used to. And so, uh, yeah, I hope that you have enjoyed this series and I'll see you once again real soon. Gosh, <laughs> this is what a day does to me. <laughs> Enjoy the video. So here we are at hopefully the final stages of this shabby chic mini album that I'm making and I did do a couple of things off camera and I'm gonna show you real quick I just didn't think it needed you know you didn't y'all are crafters you already know how to do this so okay the first thing that I did was I took um, a couple of my graphic 45 wide tags and these were the ones that you could get at Tuesday morning let me see if I could yeah remember they used to make these alrighty and I got these for like a buck 99 way back when okay and I only had three left so what I decided to do was because uh, I really like this paper and I'm saving a couple of sheets to make a couple of 12 by 12 layouts for a larger scrapbook that I have and so um, what I did was I took papers from a leftover project for polka doodles because I did design guest uh, guest design, design, guest design for them for a couple of months. And so let me show you. And I think, I'm thinking they might still have this collection. And so I will, I hope to remember to put that link in the description area of this video. But this comes from a shabby chic polka doodles paper collection. One in which they actually send out to you, not a digital one. I don't think they have digital ones. But anyhow, it's it's this one right here and so I used a couple of my um, rose die cuts from what I showed you the other day or in the, the last part of this video and basically what we're gonna do here is this one is going to go right on here just like so okay and of course I have yet to make the things that slide out of here the mats and so what I've done here is is I t I made like a little booklet just you know uh, no special measurements it was basically kind of like eye measuring you know to make sure that it would fit here and then snip snip and then just to make sure that it was not too wide and so this goes gosh I can't put this in here okay this goes right along here and let me just open it real quick and the same thing with this just eye measuring and and I did use my we are memory keepers tool I really really like this and if you don't already have one of these I highly recommend that you get one if I find it I will put it in the uh, down below and so inked around the edges and let me just Put it back in here and we already know that a photo goes in there and so this goes here and this other one is going to go right along there okay so we finished this we already know that I'm gonna die cut a piece to put a picture right here and here is my finished um, waterfall and it turned out so pretty and see look 
the thing doesn't move. It This glue works exceptionally well. And I highly recommend that you, you uh, when you can, get this glue. I know that Amazon sells it, and I will link you to it as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it does great with metals. And so I counted. We have room. Right here, we have room for 14 pictures, y'all. Okay, so I love the way this came out. See, just like so. And I am so loving this collection. And if I find this collection on Amazon, I will go ahead and link you to it. And I'm not really good at making bows, so I try to make them pretty. But okay, here we go. Just like that. And I did snip um, a bit off of the ends, you know, anything extra. And when I snip this, see how it kind of like looks like a flag, okay? And to, to make this shape, you just basically take your um, ribbon and you fold it. You fold it in like this. You don't fold it up. You fold it down like this, okay? And then you take your scissors and snip. And that's how you get this shape. In case you didn't know that so alrighty now let me show you I really really like the way this pocket came out let me see if this is small enough to fit well it's gonna be a certain size but I really like uh, the way this pocket turned out so I decided you know what for this part over here I'm gonna make another one just like it and for this one I'm gonna be using I'm gonna use my spell binders die and this is the die that I'm using I bought this at Hobby Lobby okay and uh, if y'all don't have a Hobby Lobby near you I can or it's sold out I'm gonna do my best to try and find you the lowest possible price online for this one and I will link you to it if I can't find you the lowest possible price you know then forget it <laughs> or I mean I'll still link you to it if you want if you want to know alrighty so what I did use was this larger piece right here and I die cut it in this now let me share with you a secret on whenever I die cut um, very um, uh, how would I put it uh, freely not frilly frilly fr not freely frilly designs intricate dies is what I want to say when it's an intricate design like this you know how sometimes your regular cardstock might rip or tear or something like that here is a tip that I learned from one of my BFFs she is shabby pink house on YouTube Christine and um, she um she told us one day and then I, you know, emailing back and forth, she did mention to me that she uses on her intricate die cuts, she uses this uh, paper. Let me show you. She uses this type of paper. It's watercolor paper, and the brand that I use is this one specifically. I have used other brands, but this is the brand that I love to use, okay? Granted, it does cost you a little bit, okay? So I use this sparingly, and sometimes I'll even use the cover. And as you can see, I, I pick and choose what projects this is going to be uh, used on. So... What I love about this paper is that it die cuts beautifully, first of all. And secondly, your die cut piece is not flimsy. It doesn't turn out flimsy because, you know, when you use just regular cardstock, it will kind of like flimsy out on you and whatnot. And because I'm planning, this is going to be for... Uh, pictures of me and my husband um, um, I don't want it to be flimsy you know and so I decided to use that paper on this and that is just a tip and also another thing that I do because I do uh, projects for trade shows um, let's say graphic 45 sends me something that's gonna be released months ahead and they need me to do some projects but they say you know, keep in mind, this is going to be handled. It's going to be picked up and looked at and scrutinized and everything. So 
Whatever die cuts that I use, I can't use flimsy paper because it's going to tear, okay? Um, and so what I do is I will use paper like that, and then I will do like three, maybe four pieces, and then... Um, glue them back to back right up on top of the other so that this becomes sturdy as sturdy can get and then I will use it in my in my project so that it'll survive not only the transit but uh, people because there's hundreds and hundreds of people that show up to their booths and they touch everything and they pick up and they look and they see how it was done and everything so that they can place their product orders and so yeah that's a tip for you uh, if you want something like this an intricate intricate die cut to last you may want to take the time you know go through the extra motions of, of and I know that it's work I realize that but you know what it's worth it uh, get uh, die cut several pieces together and then just glue them one right up on top of the other it works trust me it works and so but I'm not gonna do this here because I took the cue from this one like I said I really really like this option so I took another one of my acetate papers and what I'm gonna do is I am going to trim it um, to fit this frame right here and then I'm gonna glue it and it's my hopes that when I glue the glue doesn't show up around the perimeter that it just stays in there I'm gonna have to uh, be very very careful on on how I glue this and then I'm just gonna do the same as that I'm going to glue it down here and it's gonna serve as a frame for me to pull put a picture in there so let's go ahead and do that and there's no specific measurements that I'm gonna share with you it's just gonna be eye measuring and this is just an idea that you can do with your own sets of dies you know and I love that this one covers just about the entire page so what I'm gonna do here is first I'm gonna take my trusty ruler and speaking of rulers, by the way, uh, my friend Shelly Geigel is the owner of JS Hobbies and Crafts, and she did come out with this ruler, and I believe it is a registered trademark. Uh, she came out with this like two or three years ago, I forget. And so this ruler gives you the measurements, and let me see, maybe you could see it better this way. This ruler gives you the measurements not only in uh, eight, but when you turn it around, it also gives you the measurements in 16s, okay? And like I said, she did come out with this several years ago, and uh, it is trademark, and it is her trademark, registered trademark. So um, there we go. And uh, the DBS is Designs by Shelly. That's her trademark. Uh, registered name and so uh, yeah what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna and I highly recommend that you um, get this and I will link you to the ruler also in the area underneath this video and I don't get a commission by mentioning Shelly's name she's just my one of my BFFs and I'm just letting y'all know um, about this so if you decide to get one of these just let her know in her website that I was you know Sandy sent you and I just love this ruler and I don't uh, my friends always tell me you're always whipping that ruler out I'm like yes yes it serves me so well okay so I'm looking at this measurement and for my frame what I'm gonna do and I'm just doing this so y'all can see better I hope okay it's gonna be three and three quarters width wise and length I think I'm going to cut Let's see, length five and five eighths. So three and three quarters and five and five eighths is what I'm going to cut that piece of acetate. Let me just get my paper trimmer. Okay, three and three quarters and five and five eighths. So three and three quarters, like so, like so. And five and five eighths, and that's gonna be right over there. Okay, so here we go. 
let me just set these to the side and we are going to glue the entire frame onto here and then once this is dry we're going to glue this onto the page leaving the top unglued so that we uh, can you know slip a picture in so look at that isn't that so pretty i love that and i'm thinking hang on just a moment let me see maybe maybe i can add one of these bows on here like let me just take a look real quick see if it would be worthy of a bow on top and a bow at the bottom just like that oh yes 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 absolutely so let's do that and I'm gonna have to send a note to my friend um, she's my Instagram friend and um, she's from Utah and she sent me some happy mail and she made these bows for me they're so super cute yeah it's no secret that I cannot make a bow to save my life <laughs> oh there we go there and here's another one look how pretty it's turning out to be Hang on a second. I do need to do something. I need to make sure that this doesn't stick and closes the opening, you know? So that's why I use that paper there. Let me just take. Let me do this. And just wait for it to dry. Okay, I'm going to wait a few minutes for all of this to dry, and I'll be back real soon. Alrighty, so I've been going back and forth on how I'm going to finish this mini album. As you can see, it is nice and chunky and there's so much going on in between the pages that um, at first I thought, well, let me just make it elaborate and whatnot. And then I thought, you know what? No, 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 that's not what I want. I don't want to cover it up with stuff. But, but going through my stash, I found this beautiful just look how beautiful this piece of applique is and I'm thinking you know what let me just take this entire piece and put it right here in the middle kind of like center it out and let it do the work for me. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And what I've done here is I added just a couple of metal uh, corners and what I used was this glue right here and I clamped it with some paper clips, you know, like the, the banana type paper clips. I guess that's what you call them, I don't know. I went off and I made some dinner for my family. I came back and they were dry. So I added the paper clips there, uh, paper clips, <laughs> the metal corners there and I added the metal corners right along here and I'm thinking to balance this metal look oh gosh I'm all scratched up to balance this metal look that I have going here I'm just going to add this metal piece right along here and I don't know if you can tell but by adding this it, it balances this out it forms a nice triangular balance for the metal pieces here and also for the metal pieces there so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm going to use I don't know yet if this is the glue that I want to use or or that uh, heavy duty um, uh, what do you call it uh, you know the glue that you you need to apply it outside because it's so super strong that it's toxic actually um, I don't know yet if I'm I could use this one but I'm thinking I may have to use that that uh, crafting cement okay so so we're gonna wait on that but right now what I want to do is I'm heating up my glue gun because I want to apply this right along here and look how pretty it's going to look 
Oh my gosh, it's looking so pretty already. And I think that that is plenty. Now, once this um, is done and I get some a nice sunshiny day, I'm going to go outside and take some pictures and maybe do kind of like a walkthrough video. Um, and what I will do is I'm going to upload the walk through of this mini album. I'm going to upload that to YouTube like I do with my other videos, but that specific video will be made public for all to see. But just so that y'all know, um, the actual process that even though it's hosted in YouTube, that process will be for my Patreons only, is for my Patreons only, okay? So, um, yeah. And I will be making a blog post for this, and I will add pictures of this to my blog, and, um, yeah, and those will be public too, but the entire process is for you only. <laughs> So let's see, it's not ready yet. Let me go ahead and wait on that. Okay, so it looks like the glue gun is hot enough for this. So just little by little, taking a few pieces here and there. What I'm going to do here is opening this up. What I want to do here is I want to take this and just kind of uh, get off. <laughs> just kind of like move it here. Just like that. <laughs> okay, just like that. Oh my gosh, I think I have just as much hot glue stuff on my fingers like I do in my project. <laughs> okay, I thought about cutting it and then I thought, you know what, if I cut it, it's going to like start... Um, you know, the threads are going to start falling apart and it's going to look ugly. So I figure since this is shabby chic, might as well just, you know, bring it over here and kind of tuck it in there. <laughs> yeah. And everything is so uh, monochromatic anyways that I think it blends in very well. <sighs> So let's do that. Okay, and we go like so. Ow! Like so. Like so. There we go. Just like that. And ah, uh, there we go. Just like that. So now I just need to. get some of these things off here. Let me put this to the side. And it's coming out so pretty. It came out so pretty. I'm just going to like cut just a smidge it off. Just a smidge it. That's all. Okay. And perhaps bring this section. I just need a little tiny weensy bit. Just like that. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and glue. Alrighty. Alrighty. This is off, right? Yeah. Okay. So never mind my fingers. <laughs> but look at that. That is so cute. And let me show you. It's not going to look its prettiest, but um, here are the tags that I made for this. Okay. 
and you're going to get to see all of this in a better video and there we go there we go and I found these tags so I figured might as well use them here but these go here look how pretty and then on the next page we have a spot for a picture. I have to uh, find a picture that will go there. And we have a tag here. See, here's the spot for the picture. It's going to look so pretty. Okay, and here is another tag. And over here, I have this. And we uh, know that this part right here is going to be for a picture right there. Okay, so let me put this back on here, like so, and I'm just going to put this like so, and this one like so, and of course we have another tag over here, and this one's going to go back in here, let me just, am I doing this right? Nope, okay. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, I'm so loving this. I'm so loving this. And of course, we know over here we got one, two, three spots for pictures. And we have another one over here. And let's just put this back like so. And we have a spot right here for pictures. And just so that... Y'all can see, y'all know how this is supposed to work. You know, stick a picture in there. <laughs> and then we have the waterfall. And the waterfall, I think I said it holds 14 pictures. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen pictures. Yep, and so let's go ahead and close this just like that, and whoops, just like that. Okay, and then this closes like this, and I love this trim. This trim I got at Hobby Lobby. This is one of their regulars. Um, I've seen it in white and in this off-white color, and whenever I can, I like to pick trims up that are more off-white than white, because in my eyes, this is just my personal opinion, off-white looks better in shabby chic than a white white to me the white white looks a little bit more of a bridal thing and there's nothing wrong with that and look I did that to the edges okay and uh, for something like this and see it's hard to match up white with these types of metals but you can match this to those types of metals and speaking of metals I'm going to go ahead and see how I'm going to apply this on here but um this is pretty much it. That's it. That's the entire process. That's the entire project. And I hope that you visit me in my blog, okay? Thank you so very much. And in the comments, uh, thank you for watching. And in the comments section below, let me know if you like videos like these, projects like these. You know, I aim to please. And uh, yeah, let me uh, know what else you would like to see. Thank you so very much for all of your support. And uh, I will see you once again real soon. Bye.